now on to our El Nino watch, and we train our cameras on the Hucha Migori River Basin, one of the flood-prone areas in Kenya. Our special correspondent, Alex Chamwada, sought to find out the level of preparedness for heavy rains and filed the following report in the final part of the series, Living with, with Floods. Take a look. The sky is cloudy, signs that rains are here, and in Gucha Migori River Basin, like many other parts of the country, November, December may just experience a long rainy season and not a normal short one, with experts attributing this partly to global warming or call it climate change. Gucha River is already flowing fast and furious towards Lake Victoria. If it overflows, there could be dire consequences downstream. We experience floods, especially in the months of April and May, when there is long rains. When it comes to flood management, there is a correlation between the upper part of the catchment area all through the middle catchment area to the downstream. The destruction of the upper catchment areas like Transmara has a big impact on the water resources in the Gucha Migori River Basin. The platform area in uh, this, this, this part uh, in the subregion is Akira Nyatike, where the the two river systems are meeting, the Kuja and Migori are meeting, and then and, uh, it's really it's an issue to us because we really need to, it has caused problems before, so that's why we're trying to build that kind of uh, early warnings which we have in place. There are river gauges managed by the locals. Those upstream are able to warn those downstream when signs of flooding show. In the flood management issues, we realize that in the old system, our old people were using stone around, along the river line to determine the flood level in the flood plain. But we, as the digital people, we realized that we could use the scale to read the level during floods. <laughs> Experts say with proper mitigation, Kenyans could spend far much less on emergencies. Disaster management generally is a process, mainly going through four phases. Uh, first of all, we have uh, mitigation. We should take more time, more resources, more energy, and more engagement. Then we have uh, disaster preparedness. When we are now anticipating a particular disaster, we go to preparedness. When it comes, we respond to it. And when it has passed, we need to look back and uh, build back better through what is called uh, disaster recovery and reconstruction. If we build response and recover capacity, we reduce losses, even if the hazard remains high. Midstream, this is an aerial view of Migori River, cutting through Migori Town, the capital of Migori County. The town is situated about 63 kilometers south of Kisi Town and 22 kilometers north of the Kenya-Tanzania border. Here, the river gathers space, collecting more water from the residential areas and farmlands around, the buildings as well as runoff from the roads before it joins Kuja River downstream to form one big river that eventually discharges into Lake Victoria.
Migori River has its headwaters in Chepalungu Forest. If well managed, it is a resource that could transform lives in Migori County. There are other smaller rivers here, and amid the ongoing heavy rainfall in the country, the Cabinet Secretary for Water and Irrigation, Eugene Wamalwa, was here to inspect flood control works and commission various projects related to water services. This is a water intake at Oyani River, the source of water for the Migori Water and Sanitation Project that is funded by the Government of Kenya and the African Development Bank. The project is managed by Lake Victoria South Water Services Board. The potential for water use here in Migori is big. They say every positive situation has an effect and every bad situation has an effect too. That brings us to the end of our three-part series, Living with Floods. Alex Chamwada for KTN News.